So we're going to create an app. For this app, we're going to use two pieces of software. The first one we're going to use for planning and preparing all of the assets, and it's called Microsoft PowerPoint. And the second is Godot, which is where we're going to build the actual application. Godot is very powerful. It can make games, it can make apps, it can make pretty much whatever you want. For this project, we're just going to make a very simple iPhone SE app. So let's start by being organized. Create a folder um, somewhere in your system called first app. Make sure it makes sense to you, make sure you find it. Um, in order to develop games and develop apps, you do need to be very, very organized. So as you can see here, I've got my first folder called first app. So go ahead now and create that. Inside of my first app, I'm going to keep all my assets in an assets folder. Now let's open up Microsoft PowerPoint. Your Microsoft PowerPoint will look different to mine. I'm on a Mac and the version seems to be really, really old. Um, but you'll have the nice new one with very little problems and the new version of Microsoft PowerPoint works very, very well for this. So the first thing you need to do is change your screen size. As you can see here, I've already set up mine as an iPhone SE. Now let's just stick with the iPhone SE and let's input these screen sizes. That being said, if you do want to change your screen size and you do want to develop something else, there are plenty of resources out there that will allow you to kind of go away and find the um, screen size. So mine here is a height of 568 pixels and 15.8 centimeters. Microsoft PowerPoint does work in centimeters. So when you type in 568px, it will convert it to this measurement. And the same for the width. When you type in 320px, it will convert it to this measurement. If for some reason it doesn't, then you can just enter these centimeter values. So on my particular screen, to change this file size or change the screen size, I have to come to theme and then I come to this slide here that says, or this button here that says page setup slide size. If you are using the new version of Microsoft PowerPoint, you will have something slightly different. Yours will look like this. So under the design tab, you'll have this slide size button and then you can come down to custom slide size. Do that now. Once you've chosen your custom slide size, you can then change the sizes. So let's click on this button and this is the dialog box that we get. So once again, you can type in five in the height section, which is this one here, you can type in 568px. Make sure you include the px and then press enter and that will do the conversion for you. And then do the same with the width, 320px press enter and do the conversion for you. If for some reason that doesn't set it up right and you don't see these particular measurements or thereabouts, you can enter manually the centimeter value. Microsoft PowerPoint does do it in centimeters, but the new versions do do the conversion, will convert the pixel value. As long as you put PX after it, it will convert it for you. So with that being said, we now need to create our slides. So on the home tab, just say new slide and let's start creating new slides. So the first slide we need is our master scene. The master scene will house the elements that we need for every single page. So if we look at what I've got below, I've got three pages. I've got a home page, an info page and a play page. So on my home page, I'm going to have a logo. I'm going to have this ball and I'm going to have this background with three buttons. Okay. Now, because the logo and the ball are not on every single page, I haven't included them in my master scene. So only include in your master scene the things that are going to happen on every single page. From there, I've got the start of an info scene, which I do want this background and these three buttons. And the same for my play scene, background and three buttons. So when I create my master scene, that's what I need. I've created some additional buttons that allow me to have hover overs, okay? So this will be my button without hovering the mouse over, and this will be my button once I hover the mouse over. So let me show you how to create the assets and then export them ready for Godot. Microsoft has, well, Microsoft PowerPoint has some really good features for this, which allows you to export things as pictures, which are good file sizes and have transparent backgrounds. It's the transparent backgrounds and the file sizes that makes this such a powerful planning tool. So hit the new slide button and you always get these kind of extra bits. We don't need them. So let's delete them. Okay. Let's start by creating a background. So we go 
shapes, rectangle, and let's just create a plain rectangle shape. Make sure the rectangle covers the whole page. Now, under the format button, you want to come into line and say no line. You can have a line, but that's something that I don't need. Um, the other thing that I don't need is this drop shadow. So under format, let's remove any drop shadow as well. So under this kind of text property, let's come down and say no shadow. Sorry, it's not that one, it's effects, shadow, no shadow. That gets rid of this shadow because we're going for a very plain, flat background here. And once again, it does need to fill the whole of the width, so it doesn't quite fit it. You do need to kind of nudge it over and make that work. For some reason that's not there, there it is, good. Now the color also needs to be flat, I don't want this gradient, you may want the gradient and that's absolutely fine. So under the format tab, I'm gonna to go to fill this time and I'm just gonna go for a plain fill color. Let's go for this light blue this time, okay? It's still got a little bit of a gradient on it and it does wanna be a flat one. That's, that's okay, it doesn't look too bad. Now let's add a second rectangle. Um, so that I don't have to do all that stuff again, oops. So that I don't have to do all that stuff again, I'm gonna press Control C, Control V to duplicate what I've just done, and then I'm gonna resize it. So this is gonna be my menu. And the menu for this wants to be very, very simple. A contrasting color, and let's go for orange. Not the prettiest of colors, and I'm sure you guys can do so much better than that. Nudge it into place using the arrows until it kind of fills the whole scene. Now on the new version of Microsoft PowerPoint, a lot of the um, snapping tools are a lot better than this particular version, so don't worry too much. Now, we want to group it, so select everything that we've just created and right click, group the two elements. Now that we've grouped them, we can right click again and we can say save as picture. Now in the folders that we've just created, let's go desktop, digital student, my first app and assets. Now the one that I'm gonna call this is background three. I'm gonna have a few backgrounds here, that's absolutely fine. You'll probably only need one, so you can probably just call it background one or just background and you can press save. Now, if we head on over to our assets folder, what you're gonna see in our backgrounds three, if we open it up, you'll see that we've got all elements and it's saved it as a picture. Now, this saves a lot of time because we can export straight from Microsoft PowerPoint as a picture. And if you look at the size, 11 kilobits is tiny, which means it's formatted really, really well. Okay, now let's move on to another one. So if I go on to the next page, what you'll see here is I've created this bit of text and I've created this ball and all these buttons. So let's go back to my one that I'm doing now just for you guys and let's import an image. So inside of my folder from the internet, I've already downloaded this ball. Now I've called it a ball original because if you look at it, it's got this horrible white background. Now I really don't want that background because um, it just doesn't look very nice. So when you import an image, and all I did there was just dragged it from the folder and dropped it in. When you go to File Picture, or Format Picture, Remove Background, you get these bounding boxes, and you can just move the bounding box out, and it will start to create areas that get removed. Unfortunately, in this particular image, because these areas here are white as well, it's decided to remove them. But you've got these little plus and minus buttons. Wherever it says plus, means you can add to the selection. So if I just click on a few places, click and drag in this instance actually, in a few places, what will start to happen is it will start to realize that I actually want all of that white. Now, sometimes it's a bit more successful than other times, like that one, and sometimes you have to wait. But when, by the time you click and drag in, you you can kind of make those selections. Now if you click off of it, you'll notice that I've got it. If you're not happy with it, because I've obviously got these two dots here, I can double click on it again, and it will go back into, or remove background, go back into it, and now let's just add a bit more of this selection, and see if we can't get a bit more of this white stuff happening, just so it looks nice. Once again, it doesn't always happen first time, um, and you may have to play around with it and zoom in and stuff until you get exactly what you want. Okay, so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, like this one here, it's working just fine. It's 
just like one last bit to go. Come on, you know you want to work. <laughs> one more dot. And we'll leave it at that. Ah, not quite right. Remove background, last little bit. And you can remove these dots as well. So let's just remove that one because that didn't work out so well. That didn't work out so well. Click off of it. And that'll do for now. Like I say, you can spend a bit of time. You can also zoom into that area. But now we have this transparent background. So if we select the ball again, right click. And then we can say, save picture as, and we can go back to our folder and save it into our assets folder. And once again, I've got a few balls here. So let's go to ball and then call, call it ball two. It's going to be the same as ball one, obviously, but it doesn't matter. Let's just go and check that. And assets, ball two, double click. And you'll notice, because there's no white bounding box, the white has gone. We've still got this little bit here, which is obviously not, not good. But we could go back in, we can change that, and we can replace that. And that's a good point, actually. If you do want to replace something, so say, for instance, that wasn't quite right, and we format the picture, and we remove the image again. And this time, let's just zoom into it a bit more, so we can get a better selection on that. There we go. We've got it all now. Now, I can right-click it again. I can say Save as picture, go back to the folder that I want it to be in, and then I click on ball two and press save, and it'll say, right, do you want to replace it? Yes, we do. So now when I come back into my assets folder, and lots of clicking, sorry about that, you will notice that that's corrected itself and everything looks good. Okay, so the last bit is the text. Um, you have lots of formatting options, but you can export text as a picture as well. So in this, I've just created a normal text box, and I've gone to the formatting tools, and I've come down to these text effects, and I've added this transform on a curve. Once you do that, all you then do is same again, is you right click, and you say export, or sorry, save as picture. Save it to the same place, and voila. So your mission now is to design, let me zoom out again, design all of your buttons, design your background, design your logos, design your, your, your images and whatever else you need, design your hover buttons, and then in the next lesson I'll show you how to put these into Godot and start creating our app.